everybody, it's me, Lisa D. I was just talking to my friend Frank and we were talking about birds' beaks. No, 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 don't lose me just yet. Have you ever wondered why birds' beaks are shaped differently? It's not just happenstance, it's all because of evolution. Do you want to hear what we talked about? Cool! So here's the deal, all evolution starts with variation. In any population of individuals, there's like a huge variety, right? Think about like a school or even a family. There's differences between you and me, even though we're the same species, right? So where do those differences come from? The answer is really easy, mutations. A mutation is a change in the genetic code. Now whenever we think of the word mutations, we think of it like a bad thing, right? Well, mutations can be a bad thing and make an individual less likely to survive. There's probably nothing good about being born with two heads. I mean, this guy looks pretty cool, but he's probably not gonna make it to next Thanksgiving, right? Now keep in mind, we're born with our DNA. We're stuck with whatever mutations we've got. So the snake with two heads, he's not gonna change. But what about good mutations? Well, if an individual is born with a mutation that helps, that's called an adaptation. Let's write that. Trait that helps an organism survive. So I guess it all depends on your environment. The exact same genetic changes might be bad in one situation, but really good in another situation. Think about this. If a bear is born white, he's gonna stick out like a sore thumb, right? He probably won't be able to sneak up on prey, and he might even get eaten by the time he's a toddler. Pretty sad, right? I know. But wait, what if the exact same mutation happened in a different environment? What if there's all these brown bears living in a snowy environment? Now this color is an adaptation. He'll be all camouflaged and more likely to eat and live. Now who's the man? Look at his brother, he's all obvious. So it's like the environment is selecting winners and losers. If you're lucky enough to be born with an adaptation, nature will select you to live and reproduce. If you're not born with that adaptation, well, then your life's gonna be shorter and harder. That's life. That's called natural selection. Let's look at that definition. Natural selection. Individuals born with adaptations are more likely to live. Now, natural selection will eventually shape the whole species. That white bear will eat better than all the others and outreproduce all the others. Over a bunch of generations, there's no brown bears. There's pretty much only white bears. The population has changed. We say this population has evolved. Evolution is when the genes of a population change over time. Let's write that down. Don't get confused now. Evolution, change in a population's genes over time. Now, you can't try to make yourself more evolved than the other guys. We're born with our genes, remember? Those bears were just born that way. But here's the deal. The environment is always changing, right? An adaptation today might not be so good tomorrow. Let's go back to those bird beaks I mentioned in the beginning. These are different species of birds called honey creepers that live in Hawaii. See how different their beaks are? Well, which is the best? True question. There's no such thing as best. It depends on your environment. So maybe Larry Longbeak here lives on an island with really long, thin flowers. Now, if he was born with a thick, short beak, he'd have a really hard life, right? So in this environment, nature is selecting for a long, thin beak. But uh-oh, what if a drought hits the island? Now all the flowering plants die off, and the only way to get food is to crack through bark and branches to eat the insects in there. Now who's more likely to survive? Not Larry Longbeak. I like this guy's chances. Pretty soon, all the birds with long, thin beaks will die off, and after a couple of generations, the island's birds will look completely different. That's evolution, and this is really happening. This is Peter and Rosemary Grant. They're biologists that study the bird populations on the Galapagos Islands. Aren't they cute? I think so too. They measured as many bird beaks as they could on this one island in 1977. Then, uh-oh, a really severe drought hit the island. It practically didn't rain a drop. The only food source left were thick seeds and shells. Can you predict what happened next? Yeah. Pretty much the only ones that could eat and reproduce were the birds with the strongest beaks. They came back two short years later and the overall shape of the population's beaks had changed. Evolution normally takes generations and generations, but in this case, two quick years was all it took. And evolution doesn't just happen to birds, of course. Every single living thing, germs, plants, people, whales, even viruses evolve over the generations. As our planet goes cycling on, all these beautiful species have been and are being evolved. So how cool is that? Nature can select certain individuals to survive 
And so then the changes in the environment will affect the populations that live there. Evolution is awesome. Well, that's it for me. Until I see you guys next time, it's Lisa D saying, don't go changing. Bye guys.